Hey folks, it's 2012 and it's coho salmon time. It's been a long time since I've seen this many fish in the rivers as well as the salt water this early in the season. This seminar was given at Three Rivers Marine in Woodenville, Washington. I talk about tactics and techniques that you can use on any Puget Sound River from the Skagit River down to the Snohomish system including the Skykomish and Snoqualmie rivers. So stick around and enjoy the seminar. Coho is looking good and, and I just want to echo what Ryan said. Wow, it's been a long time since I've been getting goosebumps, since I've seen coho like this, right? Um, I normally don't fish the first week of the opener on the river. I don't. I pre-fish it, but I don't run trips. I don't take my clients out to fish because I want to see what's going on. I want to see how the fish are behaving. I, uh, I want to make sure there's enough fish in the river. And I went out on day one just to make sure I could get from Snoqualmie boat ramp, the high bridge boat ramp, down into the Snohomish. Because let's all face it, the river's low. It, she's low. We need rain. It's been over 51 days without rain. Well, yeah, it was over 51, we got a shower. So I ran down there, took my youngest son with me. We dropped down in the river. I'd been there 15 minutes, I dropped anchor. And I said, well, let's, uh, let's see what's going on here. I had talked to a couple guys that were trolling, drift fishing, and they had some fish on. They said, hey man, this is good. So I said, well, let's get a fish on. Fifth cast, boom, silver on. Nice hen on a, on a uh, Dick Knight, Nickelback Frog. I'll show you that lure here in a little bit. And I thought, hey, this is great. Let's go. And then I ran my trip the next day. The fish were everywhere. Wouldn't bite. Wouldn't bite. We threw the kitchen sink at them. And it gets that way sometimes. You'll throw the kitchen sink at them. And I don't want you to get frustrated because it's not something you can control. You can't control the fact that the sun is heating the water up and now we're getting into the 60s on our rivers we're normally we're in the low 50s or high 40s um, don't be frustrated by that be excited because there are so many fish there now that when the bite turns on when we do get a little bit of rain and the conditions start to change there's going to be fish everywhere you'll be able to put in at Sultan and fish all the way down to the mouth of the Snohomish and you're going to get into fish and I'm going to talk today about some of the techniques that you can use to get into fish and specifically the techniques I use to get into fish. So one of the key methods of fishing the Snohomish system, the Snohomish River, the Snoqualmie, uh, the Skycomish, is drift fishing. Um, you anchor up or you're standing on the bank, you cast, you cover a little bit of water. Okay. You reel it in, you do it again. You keep doing it over and over and over. You work those slots where those fish are holding. Okay, so that's one of the methods. Free drifting. A lot of guys don't think about free drifting for coho. And if you free drift for steelhead, but you anchor up for coho, and maybe you're not having the best day, if you've got a run open, you need to seriously consider free drifting. Because I can tell you uh, firsthand, last year, uh, three boats, we all worked together and we had over 65 fish in four hours. And that's all I did. And I never left a single drift. I stayed in the same drift all four hours. It works. Twitching jigs. Twitching jigs is an art. It's not snagging fish. It's literally twitching the jig, getting it to dance on the bottom, over the rocks, over the trees and antagonizing the coho to bite but it does work and of course you can cast plugs or spinners if I'm doing any of these things right here I use a G Loomis 1141 ultralight rod and I match my spinning reel so here is a Loomis 1141 it's ultralight I fish this rod free drifting Drift fishing, I use it for kings, coho, steelhead. 
I like it because I fish a variety of methods. I fish eggs, I may fish dick nights, and on the ultralight rods, it allows my clients to cast, who aren't very experienced in casting bait, cast, get the distance they need to to get into the spot I want them to fish without throwing the bait. Your faster action rods, you can throw the bait from it. And if you have a fast action rod and you've thrown some bait, you've seen it sling off your rod. Um, if you want to stop that from happening, go to an ultralight rod. That's going to help you out. So I really like these uh, ultralight rods, um, nine and a half foot, they're just the ticket. And I've put, the largest fish I've had on there is a 30 pound king. I run 10 pound main line. And if you're in a boat, you can do that. And we'll talk a little bit more about that here in a few minutes. So I'm running the 10 pound uh, Iser line uh, for my main line. I use the high viz so I can see it. And I've been doing this for years now, and I've never noticed this ginormous difference in, oh, hey, the fish aren't going to, they're not biting because I have high vis line. I've got leaders on there. They're not even seeing my line. They're looking at the bait. They're looking for that. High vis line is great, especially if you're running a boat and you've got a few guys in the boat with you, and you're trying to keep everybody in line, let you see that line. You ever look out there and go, where's my line? I can't see it, right? I've been there. So I like the high vis line and I don't notice a difference in the fish hitting or not hitting. My terminal tackle, on all of my rods that I fish in the river, period, with the exception of the Columbia River and the saltwater for sturgeon, I fish size 10. Snaps, interlocks, barrel swivels, size 10. I've done seminars in the past where I talk about balancing your setup. And I'm telling you that if you want some of these things to work that I'm going to show you tonight, balancing your setup is important. Your rod, your reel, your line, your leader, your terminal tackle. Because if you're fishing terminal tackle that's too heavy, some of these dick nights, they're not gonna work. You're gonna, you're gonna kill the action on them. So terminal tackle is very important and size 10 is perfect. I use Vision hooks and tackle. I love the Vision products. Uh, they're out of Olympia, and I get consistency, and I buy bulk. When you guys come out here and you buy them in a package, they're hand sorted, so you're going to have a quality product, and it's going to be consistent for you. On my leaders, I tie eight-pound leaders, okay? So if I'm fishing this setup here, and on here, I've got a double hook setup with a cheater and yarn. My leaders are eight pound. Whether I'm fishing for summer kings or fall coho, I can get away with that because I'm in a boat. So if you're in a boat, lighten up on your leaders. Now I'm gonna echo what Ryan said about salt water. Fluorocarbon is cool. It really is. I mean, it's cool but I don't use it for my leaders, okay? It's difficult to tie, and I, when I sit down and I tie leaders, I tie all of my own, I tie four, five, six hundred at a time. I wouldn't have any skin on my hands left. It's arduous tying leaders for that. But using fluorocarbon leaders on your Dick Knight spoons and for some other applications, I would absolutely do it because you're just pulling off a length of fluorocarbon and tying it on and you're fishing. But to tie leaders, I don't do that. I use the Iser line and I use the moss green. I think the moss green does just fine in our rivers, even when we've got super clear conditions like we do right now. Even though the river's low, there are holes that are eight, nine, 10, 13 feet deep. And man, I can see bottom, but I haven't had problems with my leaders, okay? So I stick with the mono and I stick with uh, the uh, eight pound leaders. Guys ask me about drift fishing. Well, how about braid? This is my two cents on braid. Braid is great. I use it on my Columbia River rods and my sturgeon rods. I love braid. But here's the thing about braid. In, your, in the river, you're going to hook up. You're gonna hang up. You're gonna catch I like to call them botanical obstructions. 
or you might hook into a tree and you're not going to be able to get it off and if it wraps up around the braid right not the leader you're not going to break off you're going to have to cut that if you cut and another guy cuts and 10 or 15 other guys cut we've got all that braid in the water and then a limb comes down because the guy up on the Skycomish River dumped his lawn clippings and his tree clippings into the river. Now we have a big ball of a mess. And now we all get hung up. So braid has an application, even on the river, but not for drift fishing, not for free drifting. Um, you want to stick with mono. Trolling plugs or back trolling. So if you like to troll plugs, or you like to back troll, right now we don't have enough flow for back trolling, so you're gonna have to troll, but back trolling's good when you have the right flow. On that, I like to use G. Loomis 981Cs. Uh, they're eight foot two uh, medium action rods, and I match the reel. And again, I can't say enough about line counters. On the river, guys, line counters are invaluable. They are absolutely invaluable. Um, I fish the Akuma reels, both spinning and uh, level wind, and all my level wind reels have line counters on them. I use the exact same reel, uh, this Akuma Catalina, for king fishing, sturgeon fishing, fishing on the river. On the river, when we're fishing line counters, you can actually set different patterns for your plugs. So if you're running three or four guys, five guys in your boat maybe, you guys are gonna run plugs, you could hug the bank and maybe put your plugs out at a diagonal line. The guy on the inside shorter, longer, longer, longer yet, right? Fish comes up to the first one, doesn't like it. What's he do? He pushes off. He, got some, he has another plug in his face, he pushes off. Third one's the charm, he can't stand it anymore, he takes it, right? Line counters let you do that because not everybody pulls line the same. If you tell somebody, you know, three pulls, maybe they're, they're counting here, not looking here. I mean, who knows? But line counters do work. I run 20 pound main line on my, uh, on my plug rods. Now, here's where you can use braid. I've used braid pulling plugs and I'm not kidding when I say, if I can get seven or eight feet, well, I can tell you right now, this plug dives eight feet. This is a head and tad poly. If I can get eight feet, I can get another foot off braided line with this. It really digs down. It gets deep, okay? Just that braided line, if I'm fishing um, braided line, I can go heavier but smaller diameter than it would be if it was mono. So braided line has an application here, okay? Besides your back trolling, you get hung up, you're, you're in the middle of the river, you can back over it. If you really get stuck there, which usually nine times out of 10, if you just get on the other side of what you hooked up on, it comes right off. But if you have to cut, you're only cutting about eight feet of line off instead of 30 or 40, 50 feet. Again, size 10 terminal tackle. A lot of guys are surprised that on my plug rods, I'm running size 10, but I do. That's what I run. If I'm running, if I'm on the Columbia, if I'm fishing sturgeon, I run seven. But I'm running size 10, and it works for me. The breaking strength for barrel swivels and snap swivels is a lot higher than a lot of people think that it is, okay? And you're just not gonna be into those fish that are 60 pounds on the Skycomish Snohomish River. It's just not gonna happen. If I'm running leaders with this particular setup, my leaders are 12 to 15 pounds, okay? So let's get into the nuts and bolts. Lures for coho. So clearly we have Dick Knights, a Northwest staple, and now they're going all over the world. They're good lures, they've been around forever, okay? They catch fish. Yarns and cheaters, corkies. Uh, if you like the corky brand, you know, uh, you're with, you like the Yakima bait products or you like the winners, that's fine. I use cheaters, Bomac cheaters. Uh, I love them. I like the color diversity that they have. They have a great color selection. Um, I like the size. I like how they work with my hooks. I like how they float through the water. And so I use the cheaters. If you're fishing from the bank, 
it's a single hook. If you're in a boat, you're allowed to fish the double hook setup, as you can see on the picture on the right, okay? That particular setup is size four Vision Fine Wire hooks. Okay guys, that wraps it up for part one. Make sure you move on to part two for some more great information on fishing coho salmon in our Puget Sound rivers. Three Rivers Marine and Tackle, your one-stop store for all your fishing needs.